Lloyd, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Rishi Sunak, you know, this big pledge of stop the boats, and uh, he's in a bit of trouble over this, with 3,000 coming in the last 10 days. I've got to ask, what would Labour do about this? Well, I, I think you've heard there a bit about Labour would ensure that there are some safe and legal legitimate routes for people to come. And it does then mean you can be quicker in sending people back when they've either already applied and failed or that you have the capacity then in country to send them back. One of the big problems that we have at the moment is people come over on the boat and then they might languish for a year or even longer to get a decision made on their behalf. And in that time, they have, of course, built up a claim for um, family life and for life in the UK. And, of course, wouldn't we all be able to do that if we stayed for somewhere for over a year? So it needs to be justice, but it needs to be quick. And that's what they've all focused on. And that's not just about speeding it up here. But that's about giving proper processes abroad. Because as you've just heard, unless you're uh, Ukrainian, Afghani, or Hong Kong, there is no legal way that someone can come. And there are refugees from all, even the very best countries will have a refugee um, every now and again because they will face political persecution one way or another. You know, kind of uh, Edward Snowden in the US is a good example who had to flee to Russia. You know, kind of, there will always be strange and odd anomalies. So you can't have a blanket ban against a particular country. All right. Well, Equally, let's say. You can say broadly certain countries are at more. Um, likelihood uh, for creating refugees. Lloyd, let's say that a safe and legal route was set up, you know, an offshore processing centre, whether it was in North Africa or France or wherever it may be, and we take people through safe and legal routes. And we believe, actually, the motive isn't just poverty, there is a genuine reason why they would qualify for refugee status. OK, granted. I mean, I think, Nigel, but, I would but if say, we do, hang on, just there one is second. a genuine if we do route that, of um, economic migration, which we should allow, but it should be on different criteria. Lloyd, if we do economic migration, there are four to five billion people that would qualify to come to Britain and Europe. Yes. On, on, it on is literally criteria, impossible. Which is our need, which is based on our need, yeah. Well, our need, uh, at the moment, our need is to reduce numbers, not increase them. But what, that's fine. OK, I'm assuming the Labour government has set up safe and legal routes for genuine refugees. Right, I'll take that as a given for the purposes of this conversation. What then happens if people keep coming across the channel in small boats? What does Labour do then? Well, first of all, we believe that it would reduce uh, the numbers, and that's the evidence where in Australia, for example, safe and legal routes were set up through um, Asian countries and processing centres offshore were created and boat numbers dropped dramatically. But the second part of that that was important is that people were processed very quickly. So when they arrived, they were either already were on the system, so were turned back to the last country that they came from, or um, in the case where they hadn't been, they were processed enormously quickly and a judgment was made for where they could reside. That's how you stop the push and pull factors. Uh, let's be honest, though, the number of people irregularly crossing the channel, and I mean by boat crossing, by hiding in trucks, by going on the Eurostar, etc., is actually lower than it has been previously. It's just that we've clamped down on the other routes and now the boat crossing is almost the only route left.